Good evening. Will the members and our guests please take their seats? This meeting will now come to order. As all members have received a copy of the call of tonight's meeting, the reading of the call will be omitted. Will everyone please rise? And I invite the members of the Boys and Girls State delegation this past summer uh, to come up on the stage and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now who will begin? Irv Porter is going to uh, introduce the delegation and uh, tell us a little bit about their accomplishments. Good evening. It's uh, nice to be back, and it's always a pleasure for the number of years that we've introduced Boys and Girls State delegation uh, to introduce them again this year. And Livy will introduce those that uh, preceded them and in their younger years also were attendees for their school, their community, and uh, uh, did whatever they did uh, with a palm and are still involved in this whole process. Uh, just visualize, if you will, and maybe this is a little redundant for some of you, but say it's 1934. You're 35 years old. You entered World War I at 19 or 20 years old. You've since been married, have kids. The kids are growing and soon will be teenagers. And you ask yourself, if you're a member of the American Legion, what could you do to help young people better understand the society they were in, the political system, what it meant, et cetera? And literally in 1934, the Legion started what they call Boy State. You were not the original member. I looked that up. Uh, we'll get you later, okay? Uh, the idea was that you didn't know very much at all about the political situation and how politics entered into the international situation and how uh, internationally, really, politics had a major impact on why people went to war. Maybe we can't figure that out today. The world was a little clearer in 1934, but they said if we could help young people learn more about democracy and get involved earlier and have a positive influence in that regard because they understood what the political implications were, uh, that would be helpful. So Boy State was started and it's been running ever since in all 50 states. Shortly after that, the American Legion Auxiliary started Girl State in every state. And shortly after that, the sequel of Boys Nation and Girls Nation was started. Two kids are chosen from every state to form a, a national government. And obviously, when boys and girls staters get together in Connecticut, for example, uh, they form a, a government for the state of Connecticut. Each government's a little bit different. So that's how it started and it's still going on. And in our world, uh, Livy, who attended Girl State and Earth, who attended Boy State a long time ago, have been giving back for the simple reason that we think that this is a great way for young people to learn more about our government. And so since this is our government at the local level, We've chosen to honor them and introduce them uh, every year for about the last 10 years. So we're very proud to uh, have you meet them and we'll introduce them uh, shortly. But you ought to, along with your peers who we'll introduce as well, at least give them a hand because they have very proudly represented Greenwich, their schools, and bottom line is that we knocked their socks off, they being other uh, towns because this year, for the third year in a row, we had a girl state governor. We'll introduce her in a minute. And we had a boy represent the state at Boys Nation. 
And so out of the well over 400 kids that we've sent since the late 1970s, the representation for Greenwich has been extraordinary. How about a hand? <laughs> Mrs. Florin. And of course, Libby Florin, our state representative. Thank you. Well, since 1997, it has been my privilege and honor to work alongside Irv Porter as co-chair of the Boys and Girls State Commission. We believe in this program and in its young participants, and we are totally committed to ensuring its continued success as a learn-by-doing lesson in American democracy. There is proof positive documentation that our delegates grow into active and aware citizens, such as those program graduates who are here tonight as members of the RTM. Would you please stand and be recognized as alums? David Detchen, Greg Fruman, Dean Goss, and Steve Meskers. Are there any other boys or girls state? Thank you for continuing a very good tradition. The 2017 Boys and Girls State Delegation has representatives from Greenwich High School, Brunswick, Greenwich Academy, and Blind Brook High School. And it counts, and it counts among its number a Boys Nation Delegate, Diego Jason, and a Girl State Governor, Willa Doss. Would you each um, please step forward when I call your name and wave? Okay. Sarah Callahan, Tim Carter, Xavier Caradini, Governor Willa Doss, Boys Nation Representative Diego Jason, Daniel Lee, Benjamin Michaels, Renee Nikoloff, Graham Pluniak, Kylie Poe, Sadie Smith, and Sarah Stober. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations, and thank you for coming tonight. And, and of course, thank you to Irv Porter and Libby Florin for the wonderful work they do. As all members have received a copy of the minutes of our June 12 meeting, the reading of those minutes will be omitted. Are there any proposed changes to those minutes? Hearing none and absent objection, the minutes as proposed stand adopted upon unanimous consent. Lucy Krasner, Chair of District 5. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, fellow RTM members and guests. I rise to remember our highly respected colleague and member of District 5, John DeChapel, who passed away on July 28th at the age of 81. John was a kind and intelligent man who not only gave to his family and friends, but also to his community. John was a member of District 5 until this past spring when he resigned due to poor health. He had been a member of the Public Works Committee for several terms and had served as its chairman for two years. His love for his community was shown by his commitment to the RTM and the Public Works Committee. The comments he made at our district meetings on all issues were thoughtful and clearly stated. He was a valued member of our group, a true gentleman, and we shall surely miss him. John and his wife, Lenny, lived in Riverside for over 50 years where they raised their three children, John, David, and Catherine. In association with the old Greenwich Riverside Community Center, he coached soccer and softball. He was also a member of the Riverside Yacht Club for many, many years. John was born in Budapest, Hungary, and came to the United States when he was eight years old. He graduated from the Hodgkiss School in Lakeville, Connecticut, and went on to earn his undergraduate degree from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. He received his MBA at NYU, and for many years was a stockbroker at Payne Weber, which later became UBS. After John retired, he joined the Retired Men's Association and soon became chair of the program committee. He did an outstanding job of arranging for a wide range of excellent speakers at their weekly meetings. John was also a driver for Meals on Wheels of Greenwich. 
With his warmth and dignity, he served our community in so many ways. John adored classical music as well as traditional jazz. He and Lenny frequently attended concerts and for many years served on the board of the Center for Chamber Music. In this way, he was able to share his love of chamber music with local residents and school children. He was also a board member of both the chamber players of the Greenwich Symphony and the Hungarian Cultural Society of Connecticut. A little more than a year ago, First Selectman Peter Tessie declared May 27, 2016 to be Lenny and John de Chapel Day. This proclamation was made in conjunction with the Rotary Club of Greenwich, which honored John and Lenny with their Citizen of the Year Award. District 5 asks that the members of this body join with them in remembering John de Chapel and recognizing his dedicated service to our town. We ask that these comments of remembrance be included in the minutes of this meeting and a copy be sent to his family. Will the members please rise and join me in a moment of silence in memory of John de Chapel. Thank you. I would like to uh, acknowledge and thank <coughs> John Dolan, Chair of District 7, for um, the yeoman's effort that he made to publicize the opportunity for residents to run for the RTM and get on the November election. John, you were wildly successful. I, I don't know if everyone has heard, but we have, uh, we have many, many more candidates than positions, and uh, there are contests in eight of the 12 districts. Um, John, John, you did a wonderful job, so I wanna thank you very much. Where else do politicians go out and recruit opposing candidates for themselves? All right, is there anyone else who would ask to be recognized? That brings us to the call of tonight's meeting. Uh, because of the shortness of the call and um, the particular items involved, I informed our district and committee chairs that I would recommend that we combine items three and four, which are related, and consider all other items separately. Item five was withdrawn by the Board of Selectmen. So, uh, in order to combine items, we need a motion to suspend the rules. Is there a motion to suspend the rules to combine items three and four for voting purpose? It has been moved and seconded to combine items three and four for voting purposes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. So we will take those two items up first and then proceed in numerical order with the remaining items. John Eddy, uh, and again, you know, we all, we all know this also was a Herculean effort uh, that is ongoing. And uh, John, on behalf of the RTM, we thank you for, for your effort. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Items three and four. Yes. And the Appointments Committee. Uh, we have before us item three, which is a substitute uh, resolution. Uh, this resolution was posted on the RTM website, and it's the resolution that all of the committees worked off of in the committee meetings uh, last week. Whereas the Appointments Committee of the Representative Town Meeting of the Town of Greenwich, Connecticut, seeks to more effectively manage and execute the responsibilities assigned the RTM for making appointments and nominations, and whereas the same committee seeks to more effectively manage and execute its responsibilities to advise the RTM with respect to all other appointments which come before the RTM, be it resolved that Section 2-17, which is entitled Membership Number and Appointment, of Chapter 2, the Administration, Article 4, the Flood and the Erosion Control Board, of the Code of Ordinances of the Town shall be amended by replacing said Section 2-17 with the following. And rather than read that, uh, the uh, substitute resolution is something that everyone uh, should have at this point, unless someone would like me to read the entire thing at this point. All right, okay. so this is a substitute resolution. 
All right, that being offered on behalf of our appointments committee, it does not require a second and is currently before us. You want to offer item four as well? Sure. <clears throat> it's a little longer. Whereas a representative town meeting has amended the charter to establish unique position designations for members and alternate members of the Flood and Erosion Control Board, this is as per the previous uh, uh, resolution, and whereas it has been established by action of the representative town meeting that positions on the Flood and Erosion Control Board have been assigned unique position designations, and whereas when appointing a new member to the board, be it resolved that, the unique position designations previously established shall be assigned to the current members of the Flood and Erosion Control Board according to the schedule below. And any new member appointed in the future to the Flood and Erosion Control Board will receive the position designation assigned the person she or he is succeeding. And such designation will be indicated on all notices of nomination and appointment, including but not limited to the agenda and the minutes of the representative town meeting, the committees of the representative town meeting, and where appropriate, the agenda and the minutes of the Board of Selectmen. And then the designations are, uh, designation R1, Edward Schmelz, R2, John Stankunis, R3, Peter Finkbeiner, R4, Aubrey Mead, A1, Robert Sensi, and A2 is currently vacant and was formerly uh, held by uh, Mark Weller. Thank you. Once again, this being offered on behalf of our appointments committee, it does not require a second and is currently before us. All right, we're going to get the uh, reports of the committees. Mr. Eddy, do you want to give a report on this? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Right, and uh, let, let me just make one. I, I want to make sure there's no confusion. Um, for item four, it does have language. Uh, the RTM has amended the charter. Right. In fact, this is not a charter amendment. It's, as you said, a, code, sorry, of, it, a code of ordinance. <laughs> Amendment. No, no, no. That's that is yeah. what it says. You yeah. you read it properly. That any amendment to the charter does require a special vote of the RTM. This does not. This is that, not a, a charter amendment. So I just want to make that clear. Right. Okay. Uh, just that's, for that's fine. We're we're good otherwise. Okay. All right. Um, and Mr. Moderator, I, I neglected to uh, uh, thank Kip Bergwager for all the work that he uh, in, invested in this as well. So, Excellent. Uh, I'd like to recognize Kip wherever you are. Thank you, Kip. Um, Okay, uh, so resolution three is a resolution which addresses the term expirations for the Flood and Erosion Control Board. It's to be understood in the context of a, uh, a larger endeavor to amend the term expirations of all of the uh, boards, agencies, and commissions, which I'll refer to as agencies going forward, which are appointed by the RTM and which should be effective if all goes well uh, on January 1st, 2018. So this particular re resolution serves as a test case. If the RTM passes this item, not only will the resolution become effective on January 1st, but the wording of this amendment will also be used as a template for the amendments uh, to the terms of the other uh, term expirations of the other agencies, which we expect to come before the RTM in October and uh, in December. Um, these amendments are strictly administrative. They do not change the role or the size of the agencies in any way, and its purpose is threefold. One is to even out the appointments, uh, the appointment workload of the RTM, which now is all centered on March 31st uh, of, uh, of every year, to reduce the risk of interruption to the agency's business and institutional memory uh, due to excessive membership turnover in a single year, and to provide consistency across agencies and how the code uh, for appointments is written and how the fillings of positions may be tracked and audited. Um, I have a lot more I can read on this. I think it will all be covered by the committees, so uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Pete, who's next? <laughs> Peter Berg, Chair of our Land Use Committee. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, fellow members. Um, so on item three and four, we had Mr. Eddy of the Appointments Committee who presented a, his revised proposed proposal in item three to modify the process by which the members of the Flood and Erosion Control Board are nominated and selected with the goal of staggering the appointment and service time of the members. This would reduce the large number of appointments handled by the RTM each spring and allow for more legacy knowledge amongst the members over time. Item four is related 
in that it identified which existing member would have what remaining term and when they would be up for reappointment. <clears throat> the goal is to do a similar modification over time for the appointment of all other committees, commissions, agencies. It was pointed out that there were several grammatical errors in the text, the correction of which will be addressed at the RTM meeting in a proposal by legislative enrolls. The vote to approve both items was done together and was unanimous. Our vote was 10 0 0. Ms. Lamaza. The Public Works Committee met on September 11th, uh, and we had uh, John Eddy with us, uh, and his presentation was so succinct, and you've already heard it, and you've already heard Peter, so I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, we were totally um, sort of blown away by the extent of the work that had to go into this project, and I think it'll serve us very well into the future, and I think every member of our committee felt that way, though we didn't take a vote. Well, to cut to the chase, our vote was 9-0-0 zero, zero in favor of three, and then 9-0-0 zero, zero in favor of four. Districts 2, 5, 9, and 11 were absent. Thank you. Doug Wells, Chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee. Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, we took up this item uh, jointly with land use last Monday evening. Um, and uh, our uh, committee uh, you men unanimously thought this, this was a good idea and is going to serve as a, a template for changes to, to make the appointments committee work better. Um, our vote was nine in favor, none opposed, with three absent. Um, districts 1, 5, and 10 were absent. We noted some, uh, some um, Scrivener's errors that I'll go through at this time and uh, tell you that we unanimously approved making these changes. Um, in subparagraph D, the paragraph that begins establishment of unique... Wh which item are we talking about? We're talking on item... These are all on item 3. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, item 3, uh, subparagraph D, that begins establishment of unique designations. Um, the, the parentheses around the word six should be removed and those parentheses should be inserted around the number six right next to it. And uh, at, after the word board in that same line, R is deleted and is is put in its place so that it'll read each of the appointed positions on this board is assigned a unique and it goes on from there. In subparagraph E, uh, uh, paragraph 2 in subparagraph E, uh, beginning with the third from the last line where it reads, um, the board positions for the purpose, and then this is the part that has changed. Between the words pur purpose and limiting, insert the word of, and then before the word turnover, delete the word of, and insert of after the word turnover, comma after year, delete and and insert in its place thus. So that'll read um, expiration years of the board positions for the purpose of limiting the scheduled turnover of board members in a single year, comma, thus minimizing risk to board con continuity. Um, also in that same paragraph above, there's um, definitions for current term and interim term. Uh, and then later on, those words are used, uh, but they aren't um, uh, capitalized as they should be to uh, conform with the definitions. So in paragraph four, where it says current terms C and T are capitalized, and then in subsection F, R1, R2, 3, R4, uh, and A1 and A2, all those have current term uh, that should be capitalized. Those are the changes. All right, so that's a motion to amend item three on behalf of the Legislative Rules Committee. Is there any objection to those proposed amendments? Hearing none and absent objection, they are adopted upon unanimous consent. Discussion on items three and four. Question. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, combined items three and four, and proceed to pull your delegation? That now brings us to the separate items. Uh, we will begin with number one, which actually is a substitute resolution. It was postponed, so 
Um, what was before us in June was postponed, uh, but we do need a substitute resolution. John Eddy has that on behalf of the selectmen who uh, send their best wishes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator. I was uh, speaking item, as you Item number one. Is it? Uh, the substitute resolution the substitute for resolution. Alan Rossi. Yeah. Resolve that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed an alternate member of the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency for a term expiring March 31st, 2021. Alan Rossi. All right. Um, will the member please move the adoption of the substitute resolution? Resolution. The substitute resolution on item one has been moved and seconded. The only change made was to make this an alternate member. And is now before us, uh, Peter Berg with the Land Use Committee report. Evening again. The Land Use Committee interviewed Alan Rossi last Monday night. I'll skip this part about the, uh, <laughs> that uh, we just took care of. Um, uh, Mr. Rossi's a management consultant uh, has no particular wetlands uh, experience. He um, focuses on s uh, social enterprises and sustainable development. His interest in serving on the wetland agency arose fr from, the, from the wetland issue at the Post Road Ironworks project. Mr. Rossi lives on the street behind and attended all of the, or many of the uh, hearings involving that project and became very fascinated by the science of our wetlands agency. And his son was involved in identification of the, ver of the vernal pool uh, behind the ironworks. Um, we, uh, we, we believe Mr. Rossi will be a good addition to the wetlands agency. Our vote on Mr. Rossi was 10-0-0. Thank you. John Eddy with the report of the Appointments Committee. I don't have much to add to, or anything really to add to uh, Mr. Berg's report. The uh, appointment committee's vote was 10-0-1 with District 3 absent, and the uh, representative from District 6 uh, suggested that a nominee for, the, for this specialized position should have different qualifications, uh, but he had no objection to the individual. Uh, but he felt that someone in, for, who's going to be working on the flood, the uh, Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency should have a background in, uh, in that area. So it was 10 0 1 with District 3 absent. Thank you. Discussion on item 1. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, item number 1, and proceed to pull your delegation? Um, item number 2 now comes before us. Who is presenting that? Item well, number no, no, this is the bag ordinance. Do we have someone to present that item? This came to us by petition. Are there any petitioners present? Doug Wells, chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee, will present it uh, on behalf of the petitioners. Um, item two, uh, to consider and act upon the following resolution requested by 20 registered voters. Uh, it is as it appears in the call. Thank you. And this has to do with banning single-use plastic bags in the town of Greenwich. All right, will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? The resolution on item two has been moved and seconded. Doug Wells, chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee with that report. Um, this uh, item is a request that comes to us by way of a petition of uh, registered voters, and it's a request for an ordinance that would uh, ban the use of single-use plastic bags. Um, members of the BYO Greenwich Group, stands for Bring Your Own, um, not uh, bring your own bags. Uh, <laughs> they, um, the members of the uh, uh, BYO Greenwich that came to us were uh, Maline Dixon, uh, Caroline Doing Holmes, Karen DeWall, and Mary Shaw Halsey. Uh, they've spent uh, 10 months uh, researching the effects of single use plastic bags. They've met with town officials and the Chamber of Commerce. And their intent is to uh, reduce uh, the number of uh, single-use uh, plastic bags uh, used in the town. Um, 
there are they know told us that only one other town in Connecticut that is Westport bans the use of uh, single-use plastic bags uh, nearby towns in New York Rye and Mamaroneck also have bans uh, then they discussed the reasons why we should be concerned about their use uh, they are hard to recycle uh, they um, um, make a mess and uh, get stuck in our trees um, they in they told us that in in Greenwich um, contrary to what I believe the um, plastic bags are incinerated and while the toxins are mostly scrubbed from the emissions uh, but only some of the toxins can be removed they estimate that based on the size of Greenwich's population we use uh, over 800 um, I'm sorry 8 million single-use plastic bags uh, per year um, Karen DeWall then proposed the uh, then described the proposed uh, ordinance it will ban uh, the single-use plastic bags six months after the enactment of the ordinance if we do enact it and there would be a 25 cent charge for single-use paper bags this would encourage residents to use reusable carryout bags um, we were told that the retailers in town are in agreement with this proposal and um, the uh, retailers would be able to retain the 25 cent uh, charge there maybe why they're on board with it um, they also um, there are exemptions for those people who um, are on WIC and and other uh, food uh, subsidies would not have to pay that 25 cent charge uh, we had then heard from our town attorney Wayne Fox who said that uh, as written the ordinance that is before you this evening is not in legal order uh, primarily because no agency is designated as the agency that would be enforcing uh, the ordinance which does call for a fine after um, after one violation um, so the ordinance requires more work legislative and rules and land use jointly um, made a motion to refer item to to a, um, a working subcommittee comprised of members from legislative and rules and land use uh, to return this matter to the RTM uh, on the December call our vote to refer was uh, nine zero with districts one five and ten absent thank you Peter Berg with the land use committee report thank you so so we met jointly with legislative and rules on this matter last Monday night <clears throat> and as Mr. Wells just explained uh, it has to do with uh, the problem of the perpetuity of plastic bag waste and the complexity of implementing uh, we talked about the complexity of Im implementing such an ordinance so it was proposed that uh, this matter be referred to a joint committee of legislative and rules and land use our vote on that motion was unanimous, 10 0 0. Thank you. Um, so, who's going to make that motion? <laughs> and my questions will be Is there a, a set number of members of this special committee that is going to be formed? Are we simply going to, uh, will a motion? provide discretion to the chairs of the land use and uh, legislative and rules committee so I may need help on that one <laughs> mr. Berg and I had discussion out about it. Uh, it's our intention to have one each um, from each committee that will work with um, the law department and uh, by so shall we just so this this is a motion to refer this to a special committee to be appointed, the members to be appointed by the chairs of legislative and rules and land use? Yes. Okay. And to a return something, to have a report back in by December? December, yes. All right. Uh, that being offered on behalf of our committees, it does not require a second discussion on the motion to refer item two to this special committee. All right. Um, I will, I will uh, call for a voice vote on this, this being a procedural matter. Um, all those in favor of referring item two to a special committee to be appointed by the chairs of land use and legislative and rules with a report to come back by December, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? No. That motion has carried. We have now disposed of, um, all right, so we have disposed of item two. I have the result of the vote on the combined items three and four that had to do with um, 
the appointments to Inland Wetlands and Water Courses One Word Agency. Those in favor, 166. Opposed, zero. Abstaining, zero. Items three and four have carried. Item five, as I said, was withdrawn. That now brings us to item six, which is another appointment. And Mr. Eddy has that substitute resolution on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be reappointed as a member of the Board of Parks and Recreation for a term expiring March 31st, 2020. Thomas McGarrity. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the substitute resolution? Substitute resolution on item six has been moved and seconded. The changes there were the correct name of the Board of Parks and Recreation and to change the term expiration to 2020. Um, may we have the reports of the committees that considered this, beginning with Andrew Chapin, Chair of our Parks and Recreation Committee. Okay. Uh, Mr. Moderator, it's an appointment. It's not a reappointment, right? Um, I don't even know why we have those words. It, all of these should read appointment. You know, that's what we are doing now. So um, you're saying this, he is a new member. Yes. Right. Yeah. All right. So um, did you have that in the substitute resolution, Mr. Eddy? Yes. yes. The answer is yes. Yes. So yes. Substitute, <laughs> yes, Absolutely. substitute resolution <laughs> said appointment. Okay. Mr. Chapin. Okay. Uh, the Parks and Rec Committee met with Mr. McGarrity last Tuesday. Um, he's been a resident since 1957. He grew up in town, went to school in town, raised his family in town. He has coached football, soccer, and baseball in town. Um, after a successful career, he has retired and wants to give back. Um, we found him very well balanced and reasonable in his approach, uh, asked as to what he sees as the big issues in the future. He pointed out Dorothy Hamill rank and dog parks. Um, there are also opportunities for improvements with the ferries in the efficiency and in passive parks, trail maintenance, maintenance and such. The committee voted 10-0-0 in favor of Mr. McGarrity, districts two and six absent. Thank you. John Eddy with the Appointments Committee report. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, the Appointments Committee voted 11-0-0 with district three absent. Thank you. Discussion on item six. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards, substitute resolution on item six and proceed to pull your delegation. Can we see the, uh, chairs of uh, districts 10 and 7. Uh, there's a question about voting cards. All right, item, item 7 now comes before us. Mr. Eddy, once again with uh, that substitute resolution. Mr. Monterey, this is, yes, the substitute resolution. Uh, resolved that the following named person nominated by the Board of Selectmen be appointed an alternate member of the Historic District Commission for a term expiring March 31st, 2022, Marie Williams. Thank you. Will a member please move the adoption of the substitute resolution? Substitute resolution on item seven has been moved and seconded. May we have the reports on this item? John Eddy with the Appointments Committee. The Appointments Committee voted to postpone this item to the next meeting. All right, so you are now making that motion? Yes. And this is to postpone it to October? Yes. All right. That being made on behalf of our committee does not require a second. All those in favor of postponing item seven to our October meeting, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. The final item on our agenda now comes before us, item eight. Uh, this is a referral. Uh, Mr. Sims, is Mr. Sims here? I know he's here. All right, uh, Mr. Sims, I, I will I will present it for you. This I'll read it. It's uh, the resolution is that the RTM approves municipal improvement designated PLPZ 2017-00048 Bruce Museum expansion, which was referred to the RTM by Robert A. Sims under Section 100 of the Town Charter. Will the member please move the adoption of the resolution? Resolution on item eight has been moved and seconded. 
Uh, we will now hear from the committees that considered this, beginning with Peter Berg with the Land Use Committee Report. Good evening again. So Robert Sims, a property owner and resident of downtown Greenwich, presented the motion for item eight. He requested that the RTM consider the appropriateness of granting MI approval to the Bruce Museum given his concerns about traffic and the character of his neighborhood. Um, by way of explanation, as you just heard, the, the moderator has crafted this item uh, to be formatted as a yes-no vote where a yes on the MI indicates approve. Mr. Sims' main points were as follows. One, the, the Plan of Conservation and Development supports the Bruce Museum, but not an expansion. Secondly, the Plan of Conservation and Development says the town should support cultural institutions that serve Greenwich residents, not ones that attract tourists who will add to traffic congestion on downtown streets and consume public parking, uh, not just at the museum. Third, the Plan of Conservation and Development supports maintaining the residential character of Greenwich. The POCD supports maintaining the residential character of Greenwich, not creating a regional tourist attraction. Uh, fourth, many residents have opposed large projects in their neighborhoods that cause traffic and change the character of their neighborhoods. Mr. Sims listed current proposal, residential proposal in Old Greenwich, one in Riverside, uh, the airport expansion near Northwest Greenwich, uh, and recent projects like the proposed Lexus dealership in Chickahominy and the senior residential complex at the Post Road Ironworks. Uh, we then had Peter Sutton, the executive director of the Bruce Museum, and Bruce Cohen, who is the attorney for the Bruce Museum, uh, and they made the following points. First, the Bruce has been working on this project for 10 years. Uh, secondly, they had long outgrown their existing facility uh, that was last expanded in 1992. Uh, third, they have completed traffic studies on nearby intersections as requested by the Planning and Zoning Commission and reviewed by towns, the town's outside traffic consultant. Fourth, it was determined with Planning and Zoning that any overflow parking could be accommodated by the commuter parking lots. Fifth, they were sh um, the Bruce is short on space for exhibits and had no space for a permanent art collection. Only the science exhibit is permanent. Uh, next, uh, they provide, uh, Bruce provides educational programs but cannot expand them despite demand because of a lack of meeting space. Uh, next, they frequently create shows that travel in the United States and internationally uh, but can only display a portion of the works involved while other museums are able to sometimes double the amount of art pieces related to an exhibit. Next, the project will enhance the cultural features of Greenwich. It will improve the profile and value of Greenwich. And finally, they have the support or approval of the Board of Selectmen, Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals, Architectural Review Board, the Tree Warden, and uh, 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 the Parks and Rec uh, Department. There were several questions from the audience. Tom Byrne asked whether the Bruce intended to have the town raise capital or guaranteed debt incurred by the Bruce. He received a no answer. Peg Freiberg from District 7 asked whether the town would in any way be on the hook for financial commitments made by the Bruce. She was told no. Peter, Peter Berg questioned the scope of the traffic studies which were limited to adjacent intersections. He questioned whether the project was in keeping with the goals of the Plan of Conservation and Development, um, which the Law Department has said is a test of municipal improvement. Mr. Sutton asserted that Greenwich is no longer a town, it is a city. 
Horst Tebby questioned the scope of the project and the impact of a regional attraction on traffic in town. The vote of the Land Use Committee was 5-4-1. Uh, districts voting no were District 1 based on traffic pollution possible costs and not supported by the Plan of Conservation and Development. District 3, traffic safety too many unknowns. District 7, parking costs not clear for management, not supported by the Plan of Conservation and Development. District 8, traffic congestion, and did not make a good case why this project is an improvement for the residents of Greenwich as opposed to the museum. Um, so again, the vote uh, from land use was five in favor, four opposed, one abstention. Uh, we had two, uh, District 4 and 5 were absent. Thank you. Doug Wells, Chair of our Legislative and Rules Committee. Um, I won't add much other than uh, our committee voted unanimously to approve um, this uh, MI um, big picture. Uh, they're raising $60 million of private money to enhance a uh, town building. It appears to our committee to be a good deal. Thank you. Stephen Meskers, Secretary of the Education Committee. No one else was there. <laughs> so I think most of the major points were raised and, and discussed here. Um, again, to highlight, why is this coming before us? It's because um, it was objected to by a person owning property within the town of Greenwich as established by the Charter. Right? Uh, in, uh, in, for the summary of it, I guess the best is um, we uh, voted on this, and our votes were seven in favor, zero opposed, with four abstaining, and we had District 8 absent. So there was support. The concerns raised by those abstaining, which I've been led to understand may be addressed in item five when it comes back to us, relate to the size of the construction project, which is, I guess, roughly $40, $45 million. The balance of that is going to be $15 million, which is going to be added to the endowment. So the concerns that were raised by, by us is that 24 million of the 45, approximately, has been pledged. 16 million of that is actually in cash. So there's an eight, eight million of pledges, leaving us with a shortfall yet of about 24, 25 million dollars on that. And then the other uh, question was regarding the in increase in the endowment, which would go from, which would, in would increase by 15 million dollars. That would leave the operating budget moving from $5 million to $7 million. So the endowment we looked at is potentially having a marginal shortfall, depending on the earnings rate, if we're using 4 or 5% on the endowment. Um, so we were, we were interested there in the insur assurances we would get that, um, that the town's contribution, which currently stands at about $800,000, uh, wouldn't be excessively increased. To, run, to continue to run the operations there. But generally, the, the views of the group were all positive. Those concerns we were expecting would be addressed in, the, in item five when it's referred back to us. And in general, the conversation which was in the general group and not in our particular group raised the question about the appropriateness of a world-class uh, museum, et cetera. And I would say that that question was raised to the group and there were no objections to creating a world-class museum. We acknowledge that a world-class museum would attract uh, additional uh, visitors to the town, and no one on the committee objected to that. And that would be my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael Warner, chair of our finance committee. I'll try not to ramble, but I'm going to edit um, what I have to say. Um, we also met in a joint meeting um, on September 11th with the other committees. Um, a few points worth mentioning are when the Bruce Museum started out, the town paid 100% of their cost. And with over time, we are now paying 14% of their cost because of the financial heft of this corporation. Um, important points to, me to remember are uh, they are on the hook for uh, for raising the extra dollars, not the town. Uh, they uh, want no guarantees from us. 
Um, needless to say, anyone living in this town knows the, um, the, the demonstrated strength of the Bruce Museum. Uh, secondarily, um, there were uh, f f there was a question raised about what criteria should we use to evaluate this increase. And the answer we got was interesting. We're not being asked, at least the Finance Committee, we decided, was being asked to, to look at it as, is this expansion good for the town? That's the fundamental criteria. We're not re required to look at planning and zoning criteria or other criteria, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But your finance committee in discussing this came to the fundamental conclusion that it was good for the town. Uh, some issues were raised. Uh, uh, one of the issues was, well, how detailed was that parking study? Uh, is there going to be a parking impact? And on this matter, we had um, uh, Katie DeLuca present and um, as well as myself who had spent some time in the past before the Planning and Zoning Commission and in, in uh, other items and I can tell you that the Planning and Zoning Commission has their own traffic study consultant who reviews the traffic study being presented by applicants and um, in my experience they do uh, uh, as the town has a reputation for a pretty severe job whether and, and the Bruce Museum has gone, as we've said, everything from the Planning and Zoning Commission to the Tree Warden and everything in between, they received the required approvals. There's not a lot of unanswered questions here. Um, uh, however, um, uh, the fundamental question was, is this improvement good for the town? And we took up two issues. One is the science um, component that is this museum runs a lot of our kids through this museum on uh, on uh, addressing the issues of science real life touch and feel exhibits that um, uh, most of our members readily acknowledge is of great value to the town there's no question about that the other component was an expansion of the artistic piece that is increasing the size of the shows and whether they're of value. And fundamentally, uh, uh, the answer that your finance committee came with was yes, this is an improvement that we should endorse. And in summary, I'll just comment to say um, we had two motions. One motion was to postpone this item to look for more information. And um, the, the vote on that was um, uh, three seven zero three three in favor of postponing seven against postponing um, and um, I, I know I don't know if I failed to mention we had um, districts four and eight absent uh, after that we took a vote on the merits of this as it's written in the call and um, the the vote on that was seven one two um, in favor of uh, approving this motion by uh, to approve this MI. Thank you. Thank you. And I understand <clears throat> District Seven has a motion directed uh, to item eight. John Dolan, Chair of District Seven. Mr. Moderator, uh, District Seven moves that item eight. Municipal Improvement, PLPZ 2017-00048, known as the Bruce, Mansion, uh, Bruce Museum Expansion, which was referred to the RTM by Robert Sims under Section 111 of the Town Charter, be postponed until the December RTM meeting. Postponed till December. Okay. That being offered on behalf of our, one of our districts, it does not require a second. Would you like to give a report on that? Please. Okay. So the, uh, the rationale is that uh, this item 8 was discussed at the District 7 meeting on Thursday last week and two broad types of concerns were raised and in our minds remain unresolved. On the one hand, there were questions about certain impacts that uh, were cited by Mr. Sims on certain impact issues, traffic noise, including the need for testing to address potential toxic soil. Um, so close to the Bruce Playground, and the notion of the Bruce Museum aspiring to be a regional center. 
In addition, many members express concerns about potential financial obligations by the town, either in the form of being asked to raise capital, guarantee debt, or on future operating costs, which were not completely resolved. Both groups felt that both sets of questions would either require more time to review the current material and better information to analyze their unresolved concerns, and or time to explore guarantees by the Bruce, the town's lawyers, that any proposed expansion would not have a direct financial impact on the town. Furthermore, even if item eight is, item five is uh, potentially raised um, at the October RTM meeting, members will be able to digest item five separately from the broader questions of MI if the motion is postponed until December. I expect that other speakers will elaborate on both these themes. Uh, the motion that I discussed to postpone was voted on 15-3-0 at the D District 7 meeting. Those in favor espoused many of the above views. Uh, those opposed uh, prefer to take up item eight tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So we currently have before us a motion to postpone item eight to our December meeting. Discussion on that motion to postpone. Peter Berg. Mr. Moderator, through you, could do we know why the, you said the board of selectmen, but I think it was the first selectman who pulled item five. Do you know why that happened? Let's see if I can pull up a, an email on that. This was an email uh, from the first selectman uh, dated September 11 to me. In response to your email and in consultation with representatives of the Bruce Museum, we are respectfully, we are respectfully withdrawing item five for RTM consideration. It is our hope and intention to resubmit this item to the October RTM meeting. Item five is the proposed amendment to the management agreement of the Bruce Museum. That's all I could say, tell you. Um, I, I also, my understanding was it it was related to some inquiries coming out of the BET and um, Mr. Tessie uh, was under the weather tonight and sent me an email saying is it um, yeah. I know they had a meeting oh here it is as a side note, I understand there may be a motion to postpone item A today. The BET Law Committee members, Tarkington and Crummock, the Comptroller, Town Administrator, Town Attorney, and I met with Bruce Cohen and Susan Leo from the Bruce Museum to further look at concerns raised on the Second Amendment. That's item five. There was cooperation from the Bruce to address these issues and work with our Town Attorney to reduce any Town of Greenwich exposure, financial, legal, and environmental. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, I would like to comment on the, um, on the timing of all of this. The um, uh, the, uh, I, the point uh, the point being that we know that what MI is MI is planning approval, as contrasted with site plan, which is zoning approval. And one of the problems. All right. that uh, no, we're not. We're not getting into to issues relating to MI in general. It's shall we postpone this to December? This is the Bruce Museum so, Municipal Improvement. So I just point out that the museum, since uh, since the Bruce Board approved this project in the spring of 2015, the museum has spent, they say, four and a half million dollars on site Mr. plans. Mr. Berg, the issue is: Do we postpone? Do we take this up tonight, or do we postpone it? to December. So one reason not to postpone is because so much time and money has been spent on this project. Uh, we're not going to uh, turn this uh, project down and waste four and a half million dollars. So that would be a reason not to postpone. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion to postpone. David Detch in District 10. Yeah. 
this seems to be an effort to um, cut off our nose to spite our face here. The fact of the matter is we are the last in a long line of people who have considered this expansion and every body and organization within town government before us has in fact approved it. The likelihood that we're going to find some additional earth-shaking information between now and December that's going to change the vote, I consider that probability to be very close to nil, and I think it's time to act on this now, not later. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion to postpone? Mr. Von Kaiserling. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, as Mr. Berg was pointing out, we are subject to a problem of confused process and issues. Over a period of time, growing like topsy, the process of an MI, of a site plan, and the management are all being rolled into one ball of wax. And quite frankly, they're separate issues, and there is a process to deal with one, each one of those issues in a proper manner. If we're going to ball all these together, it's only going to be more confusing for us. It has been told to us, as far as I understand, that the question of the management, uh, which I, concerns me as much as it does District 7 and others, uh, is an issue which is separate. And the reason that the, the BET was worried has nothing to do with the expansion or the, pre the question before us tonight. It was a fin financial obligation question of between the town and the museum as to who takes an exposure or a liability. It has nothing to do with the question of the project that's being put before us. Now, I also say, as Mr. as Mr. Berg attempted to say, that the PNZ in its effort to make an efficient process has combined site review with MI and further confusing it according to the charter under 99. All right, we're not discussing Mr. that Mr. issue. Should we postpone Mr. to Moderator, December? No. Mr. Moderator, no. I believe Excuse me. this is pertinent We're not to discussing Mr. that Moderator, general issue. It is pertinent to the reason for the postponing or not postponing, sir, because it's a larger issue. If we're going to break things down to small pieces where we can't see the whole, there is no way that we can act as a mature fact, and whatever holistic the, the, body. This is a de novo review. Whatever planning and zoning does has nothing to do with whether we are going to decide this tonight I or in December. So we're not taking that issue up. I am and if you, if you have nothing further to say, I'll call on our next speaker. I am trying to explain, sir, why we should not postpone it, because there is no reason to, because the reasons that have been raised for the postponement have been removed and mitigated and explained uh, on the reason of a management contract, that one has nothing to do with the other. One is a building project, one is a thing. We have a body, the Bruce Museum, who is not leasing the museum from us. It is, in fact, an agent for the town, like you would have a real estate agent. Rather than leasing it like somebody else, the boat clubs, they have been, in effect, contracted or hired by the town to manage the museum's process for the town for a set fee, which is way, way lower than would All be right, realistic. thank you very much. Lucia At Jansen, did you want to speak? Yes. Yeah. Lucia Jansen, District 7. I object, sir. Thank you. Good evening. I am one speaking of the speaking on the motion to postpone. I am speaking on the motion to postpone. I am one of the district 7 members in support of the motion to postpone. And I first want to say that I am a huge supporter of the Bruce Museum and I am a member of the museum. The reason why district 7 under the de novo approach which includes financials, it includes whatever we want as a body to include, has asked for this motion to be postponed, is to include the financials that are going to be expressed in the management agreement. This is a massive project. The current building is 30,000 square feet, moving to 70,000 square feet. As one of my District 7 colleagues noted, the Guggenheim, is smaller than the proposed museum here. This deserves analysis. 
We also want to highlight that there was environmental soil test conducted in 2015. That was for a 20,000 square foot footprint. As we know now, it's a 40,000 proposed expansion footprint. Does anyone in this room want to enter into a new construction agreement without knowing the soil condition? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, okay, so. Oh, you have more? I, I just wanted. I, so, so what we ask is for an expression, a written expression, and a management agreement between the two parties, and then we feel great to support this. We do think that the idea of an expansion it has merit. It just deserves more analysis. Thank you. All right, Mr. Pirelli Minetti, District 12, be followed by Peg Freiberg, be followed by Don Conway. Good evening. Uh, I'll be brief. Everybody's uh, mentioned that it's a de novo review. Um, the other thing is that I don't think anybody here really thinks ultimately that the Bruce is not going to be a good idea to expand it. But I think there are a lot of unanswered questions. There are other issues that can come up, like, for example, right now there's one day a week that's free. Maybe since two-thirds of the visitors come from out of town, when we renegotiate the management agreement, we should have it free for, for town residents all the time. There are many, maybe other reasons. The point is, is that without additional time to review this, we really don't have a voice of the citizens and more input. And I think it's important to give this proper review from a financial perspective to really be very, very comfortable that we aren't spending any more town money or taking on additional liabilities. One quick point I'd make, this is sort of interesting, when the director of the museum spoke about the advantages to the town, he talked about how people would be coming to the restaurants in town and using them, but he didn't mention that they're gonna build a cafeteria. So, which is going to probably, you know, provide meals for most of the people who come to visit. So, I, I think, you know, there's just more uh, vetting that needs to be done. So, I'd urge you to support the postponement. Ultimately, I'm almost certain I'm going to be supporting it. Thank you. Peg Freiberg, District 7, be followed by Don Conway. I'm also a frequent visitor to the Bruce, which I think is a wonderful institution and resource in the town. And I agree that doing this project would make it an even better resource for the town. What concerns me is I think this gift has a potential Pandora's box associated with it, which I don't think has been adequately communicated so far. And I would ask that you reserve judgment for a minute and a half instead of considering it a done deal and a slam dunk. Um, as our committee, joint committee meeting uh, found from our town attorney when we met, we are not here to decide whether the planning and zoning and the architectural review people and so forth decided correctly or whether they made a mistake. That's not our purpose. Nor are we limited to the considerations that they considered. We should, can consider and should consider whatever is necessary to decide whether this is going to be good for the town or bad for the town. And I submit to you that whether it will turn out to be good or not good depends to a very considerable extent on things that are not currently known. Now, we found out from the uh, attorney for BMI that they will write their contracts with contractors in such a way that the town will not be liable if they default on the contracts because their donors end up not ponying up the promised money. Um, but 
Imagine to yourself that indeed, for some reason, these donors on whom they're relying for $60 million do not come through or do not all come through. And imagine that this building is stopped by the contractor in the middle because they aren't getting paid. Now, BMI has no assets, right? Its endowment is almost all tied all right. up with Are we going to take it up tonight or and, December? And I think, I think we should defer it until December, which will not delay it. That'll answer all those questions. And we'll get answers to these questions at the same time that all the questions for the management agreement are being answered. We'll find out in the course of the analysis of the management agreement, what we need to know to do a responsible financial analysis of the MI. Thank you. And need I remind you about certain <laughs> unpleasant surprises that this RTM has seen with the costs of polluted All right. fields. Don Conway, <laughs> District 2, to be followed by Stephen Mesker's District 6. I would ask you, in rising, not to postpone this. If any of you have looked at Channel 79 recently or looked over at all the shows it's produced over the last year and a half or so, you'll find there's a number of shows there that deal with the Bruce and all the expansions. All these questions about parking, building this, doing that, elevation, trees, the whole doggone thing was hashed out at all those meetings, not in just one night, over many nights and for many hours. So if you want to learn anything about this, go into the archives of Channel 79 and look at them. Thank you. But please, let's move this thing on. Thank you. Stephen Mesker's District 6. I apologize for taking your time on this but I think it's important to us that we do consider to move in favor of the municipal improvement. I'm comfortable, given what we've faced in the way of financial constraints, that the management agreement will, will directly assess those issues. The municipal improvement, if it, is, it needs to be granted for the fundraising to continue. The objections were two, financial and a world-class museum with, I guess, foreigners visiting. If you've been to Greenwich Avenue, you can wander down an avenue of empty storefronts. If we're looking at having a world-class museum that our residents and those foreigners use, we might actually improve the tax base. And I can't imagine why we have an Apple store if we don't like visitors. Dean Gamanos, District 7. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I just have three words. What's the rush? You know, this is a huge uh, doubling, more than doubling the size of the existing museum, which I'm very fond of. I go there frequently. I think they're very professional. I think it's an asset to the town. I've seen the designs. Uh, it does change the character of the museum, and it might change the character of our town. Not, not in a terrible way, but, but it's something that I think we owe ourselves as a deliberative body to think about, consider, answer more questions. There is a nice playground across the street where I take my grandkids to. I don't know if uh, all the traffic will overwhelm that. There is the uh, soil issue, which we've had experiences uh, before. So I think, uh, and I'll probably agree to go along with it, but I, I think we, I, I guess, I feel I'm being rushed on this thing, and I think we should just give it a little more time. Thank you. Well, the district chairs, I'm going to take a recorded vote on this. We are voting on the District 7 motion postpone item 8 to December. Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards? District 7, uh, Mr. Meskers? The wording is to approve, yes? Yeah? So a vote in No, no, no. no. We're, we're not voting on the MI now. We're voting on the motion to refer. If you are in favor of postponing item eight to December, you should vote yes. If you want to take this up tonight, you should vote no. 
So, will the district chairs please mark your voting cards. Motion, uh, district 7, motion to postpone item 8 to December and please proceed to pull your delegation. We will need to await the result of that vote before we can, uh, well, before we can determine whether we have any further business to conduct. I have the result of the vote on item number one. That was the appointment of Alan Rossi to be an alternate member of the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses One Word Agency. Those in favor, 166, opposed two, abstaining zero. That item has carried. And on item six, that was the appointment of Thomas McGarity to be a member of the Board of Parks and Recreation. Those in favor, 169, opposed, zero, abstaining, zero. That item has carried. So we have now disposed of um, all of the items before us tonight except for item eight. And I ask that the district chairs please expedite the voting on the motion to postpone. Now you know there are days when you'll never forget where you were that day. <laughs> Do you remember where you were on September 7th, 2017? That would have been a week ago Thursday, not this past Thursday. Did you know that that, that day was Despina and William Fossilly Otis Day in the town of Greenwich? <laughs> in honor of all the many good deeds both Despina and uh, Bill Fossilly Otis have done for the town, so congratulations. And it was also their 65th wedding anniversary.
the result of the vote on the District 7 motion to postpone item 8 to December. Those in favor, 68. Opposed, 96. Abstaining, 4. That motion has failed. So item 8 now is before us on the merits. Discussion on item 8. Mr. Sims, did you want to be heard? Robert Sims, who is the referring party. Good evening. My name is Bob Sims. I'm a 25-year resident of downtown Greenwich District 1, and I'd like to uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you about the proposed expansion of the Bruce Museum. I am grateful for a town meeting form of government that gives an ordinary taxpayer like me the right to refer a municipal improvement decision of the Planning and Zoning Commission for debate by our town's legislative body. This is an important right granted by Section 100 of our town charter. In my explano, I mentioned that I am a member of the Bruce Museum, and I truly treasure this town asset, and I enjoy my visits there. Living within walking distance, I visit the Bruce Museum probably more often than many Greenwich residents. Um, like most Greenwich residents, however, in my time as a resident, I have noticed the increase in traffic congestion in town, and especially in my district, cars typically plow through intersections um, without heating pedestrians. Um, some of the lights aren't adjusted uh, for pedestrians. Uh, but during this period, Greenwich has seen no increase in its population. In fact, our downtown district has actually lost population, dropping by fully one-third since 1970. Regarding municipal improvements, our town's attorney's office has advised that the test of a municipal improvement is consistency with the goals of our plan of conservation and development. The Greenwich Plan of Conservation and Development, adopted by the RTM, says Greenwich's number one goal is, and I quote, to be and remain primarily a well-maintained residential community for all our current and future residents. The plan says that the retail, dining, and cultural institutions of Greenwich are for the residents of Greenwich. The city of Stanford's plan, however, has a goal to be a regional center of the arts. Greenwich's plan does not contain any such goal. Is it in the sights of Greenwich to be a, a city like Stanford? The plan of conservation and development says the Bruce Museum, uh, quote, enhances the quality of life and Greenwich should continue to support the museum. Action item 6.28 then goes on to say, continue to support the libraries, Bruce Museum, and other town-financed cultural facilities. The plan does not support expanding the Bruce Museum. Most of District 1 is zoned for residential use, and the Bruce Museum is zoned for residential use. In 1992, about the time I moved downtown, the Bruce Museum doubled in size as has been, well, it was mentioned today, the Bruce is just under 30,000 square feet. The Bruce Museum is proposing, as was mentioned, to more than double to 70,000 square feet approximately. Uh, this is larger than that new spy museum in Washington, D.C., which weighs in at a whopping 64,000 square feet of space. The Bruce Museum has communicated that it aspires to be a regional tourist attraction. And uh, as you can read in what was item five on your call, the museum is justifying its proposed expansion in part on the economic value the tourists will bring to Greenwich. Recently, our local newspapers reported the following stories. First, the residents of northern Greenwich, northwest Greenwich, uh, District 10, uh, oppose an ex expansion of the Westchester Airport. This, the article said that those residents like the Westchester Airport the size it is. 
They don't want any more traffic congestion in their neighborhood and no more air pollution. Second, the residents of Riverside, District 5, packed the town hall meeting room to, oppor to oppose an affordable housing project on the post road at Sheep Hill Road. They said the proposed project was too big and would cause increased traffic congestion and threaten pedestrian safety, including the safety of children walking to school. Our third story is about an affordable housing project in Old Greenwich across from the railroad station. Again, residents of Old Greenwich packed town hall meeting room and it overflowed into the other rooms equipped with closed circuit TVs. They said the proposed project is inconsistent with the character of their neighborhood. Fourth, a resident from Byram, District 4, uh, referred the new Lebanon School MI to the RTM because he said it's much bigger than the needs of his neighborhood. Fifth, residents from District 7 opposed and defeated a helicopter pad at the Greenwich Hospital and a senior living residence at the Post Road Ironworks. Six, uh, residents of Chickahominy, District 3, opposed and defeated a giant new Lexus facility on Old Track Road. Now, the museum is in my neighborhood, a lovely section of town that is close to I-95, and the question you need to ask is not, do I like the Bruce Museum? Uh, I, I know that you do, just as I do. The question that you need to ask yourselves is, do I want to become, do I want Greenwich to become a city or do we want it to remain a town? When is traffic congestion too much? When does traffic congestion endanger the children at the playground across the street from the museum? Uh, an incredible playground. When are the children riding bicycles to the ferry terminal at risk? How much air pollution is enough? How big of a museum is big enough? And does the town of Greenwich wish to be a regional tourist attraction? Thank you for your time and attention. Further discussion on item eight. Is that Susan Leo? It is. All right, Susan Leo of the Bruce Museum. Suzanne. Again, uh, my name is Suzanne Leo. I'm managing director of the Bruce Museum. Um, I know I recognize many of you as members and friends, and thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to respond this evening. Um, I don't know that I can respond to all of your questions and all of the concerns. Um, with regard to the petition to stop the MI approval, um, I would like to say just a, a few things. Um, one of the concerns mentioned was that um, there is a, a wish to keep the, the museum community-based, and we are, but I'll remind you that when Mr. Bruce uh, deeded the property to the town, he stipulated that it be open to the public, uh, not just to Greenwich residents. And while one-third of our visitors right now do come from Greenwich, uh, two-thirds of our visitors come from uh, Westchester and from other places in Connecticut, uh, we are already a regional museum. Um, we had the highest attendance that we've had in over five years with 90,000 visitors. Um, naturally, they did not descend upon the museum all at once on one day, uh, so we were able to accommodate those folks, but we are having problems legitimately teaching school children who come. We have one classroom. It seats 50 children. Um, we can't possibly see the 25,000 to 28,000 children that we see each year with one classroom. And moving forward, uh, that's one of the reasons that we are looking to expand. Um, it would bring benefit to this town. I truly believe that. I know that many of you do as well. I ask that you vote on the municipal improvement and enable the Bruce Museum to come to your districts to answer your questions through uh, our conversations with the law department, with the BET, with finance committees as they arise with regard to the operations and the funding of the expansion. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion on item eight. David Detchen, District 10, to be followed by Peter Berg, District 8.
Um, I think one thing to keep in mind is that this is an existing facility. It's not a new one. Um, this is a use uh, of this particular location that's been there for a long time. And as the previous speaker just pointed out, it already is a popular uh, institution in our town. Um, the fact that the POCD supports the Bruce Museum but doesn't say anything about expansion of the Bruce Museum does not necessarily mean that the POCD is opposed to expansion. It just simply has nothing to say on that particular topic. Uh, my view as a resident of Greenwich for all these decades is that I've felt a strong sense of frustration about the Bruce Museum in the fact that its size deprives the residents of Greenwich the opportunity to see more of the permanent collection of this museum. This museum has, in fact, a very good collection of paintings of the Connecticut Impressionists. And the problem is you can only see it in little bits and pieces in various times when a portion of the halls can be used for that purpose. To a certain degree, one can even argue that right now, the Bruce Museum, in terms of its art collection, not its science collection, but the art exhibits, is a form of Kunsthalle. And a Kunsthalle means it doesn't really show its own collection, it shows other people's collection, simply because there isn't room otherwise uh, to do so, and even then, when it's showing other collections frequently, they have to be abridged because of the limited size. This is frustrating to me as a resident of Greenwich, and I frankly don't care whether it's frustrating for somebody in Westchester County. It irritates me that we're not able to see all the assets of this particular museum uh, in any meaningful way with a real thread of explanation and and clarity uh, in, in its halls. Um, so the defeat of this municipal improvement designation is it's a defeat for the residents of the town, forgetting what it is in terms of people from Westchester or wherever. And I simply cannot be convinced that allowing the expansion of this museum is going to turn Greenwich into the Atlantic version of Las Vegas. <laughs> Peter Berg, District 8. Um, I just want to thank Mr. Sims for exercising his right under Section 100 of the Charter to allow the RTM to debate this municipal improvement. Uh, this is a most obscure rule uh, that we should all better understand, um, and I don't believe we do. So thank you, Mr. Sims. Betsy Fruman, District 9. Once again, I stand before you and say we have to reward excellence. The Bruce Museum is excellent. Why do we want to tie their hands? Why do we want to see four and five of their employees crammed into a little office? Let them have their own offices and let's service our own children the way they should be serviced. Let's have them have an art, a permanent art collection so that our teachers can teach to the permanent art collection, please. Let's pass this. Further discussion on item eight? Yes, sir. Joe Slar, District 8. So I see a similar group of speakers who come out on one side of this issue and the same similar group of speakers who come out on the other side as the issues passed before, brought before the RTM. At the end of the day, to me, it's always been, if you know me, who pays for it? And how much is the taxpayer burdened by the, the latest request to the RTM? 
Now, I think the folks who want to postpone it are asking those same questions. Bruce Museum's awesome. We all want a great museum in town. But at the end of the day, who's going to pay for it and who's going to be shouldered with that responsibility going forward? I would think that the wonderful folks behind the Bruce Museum, the trustees, many of which serve in our town government, will have already brought together the financial package necessary to be able to complete the improvements that, that they're talking about. I, I don't see that yet. I don't see the full delineation of costs yet. As such, I support postponement uh, or rejection right. this is, of this issue. This is now the merits. Do we approve or reject it? Any uh, further discussion? Will the district chairs please mark your voting cards? Item number eight, Bruce Museum Municipal Improvement. If you are in favor of granting, of approving this MI, you vote yes. If you want to deny it, put an end to the project, you vote no. And uh, we will need to await the resolution of that vote before we can proceed to adjourn, that being the final item on our agenda tonight. We have the result of the vote on item eight, which is the referral of the Bruce Museum MI. Those in favor, 127. Opposed, 33. Abstaining, 7. That item has carried. That MI has been approved. There being no further business to come before the meeting and absent objection, this meeting stands adjourned upon unanimous consent. Thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip home. <laughs>